this is where I got dropped off. Hiking through the San Juans. Nice uh, hiker that just got off trail dropped me off. And this is where I'm going. Starting off on the Colorado Trail. Yeah, it's beautiful out. A little chilly, but beautiful. Day one, here we go. Just enter the Wemenuch Wilderness. Wemenuch, Wemenuche. Potato, potato. Starting to get a little bit of fall color. It is the last week of September. A lot of aspen out here. Very cool. Lori says I need to do this more often. So here you go. So started off last night, left the house at about uh, 4.30, made it to Flagstaff and uh, found a little patch of uh, forest road, stayed the night, got about eh, maybe four hours three to four hours of sleep, got up, drove the rest of the way here, and uh, pulled in about noon. Real nice hiker just coming off the trail. Gave me a ride up to the trailhead. I dropped the Bronco off uh, at my exit point. About a 15 mile ride up the hill. And and started on the Colorado Trail. Hoping to do anywhere from 40 to 60 miles, depending on how I feel. Doing about six days, maybe seven. Again, depending on how I feel. And there you go, it's day one. miles in and man, not a bad way to start. Nice feeder creek around the side of the trail. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, let's keep the feet dry for now. to the train stop. <laughs> Speaking of, looky there, good timing. Absolutely gorgeous. Finally down. Right knees barking. The brace does help. Pushing four o'clock. It's three something, I believe. I got another five miles to do if I want to get to the site that I want. And yes, you have to get the stereotypical railroad shot. Made it up to the junction. Train stops down that way. CT's this way. I've been on this. This is what we did last year. All legal. Beautiful section of trail. 
cliffs, water. Water's down from last summer. That's the log we had to cross. It was, uh, all of that was wet. Water flowing, we had to literally uh, crawl across that rock, uh, log. It's cool to see the difference in the fall. The meadow's very fallish looking. Didn't do a uh, recap when I got uh, done yesterday. It was, uh, by the time I got to camp, it was after seven and needed to set up and eat. I was starving. Started on the trail at about uh, 12.45, almost one o'clock. Hiked about almost 10 and a half miles, not quite. Found camp, that's the same camp we had uh, when we were here last time and we had COVID. So I stayed in our COVID camp. Basically sat down, ate, and uh, crawled into bed. I was wiped. It's about 37 degrees this morning. Got chilly. Plan is to get up to the uh, uh, the pass and uh, just kind of hike along the CDT and maybe find a lake to camp at tonight. We'll see how that goes. Here, I'll show you camp. So that's where I ate dinner last night and had a mouse jump into my food bag that was sitting right next to me. He uh, was not very afraid, had to shoo him out. And here's campsite. That's pretty much exactly where our tent was for three days. So I've already had uh, coffee. Breakfast is ready to go. I'm gonna break down and hit the trail. Gotta go get some more water too. This is what I got to listen to all night long last night. Right off camp. All right, I'm set to go, day two. Leaving camp a little late. It's about 9.30. Always takes me a day or two to get into the swing of things. Heading up there. Should be uh, interesting. Just came out onto this opening. You can see where the uh, big landslide was. Awesome. Well, this is about as far as we got last time. So everything I'm doing from here on up is uh, all brand new to me. Getting into some uphill. I don't know if it's the elevation. It probably is. Can't clear the, uh, the lactose out of my legs so they won't stop burning. So I use that as an excuse to stop and take more video and photos. I'm in about 10.6, 10.7. And still going up. I should top out today about 12 and a half. Climbing. Well, my pass is I think it's beyond this, out in that direction. All right, break time. Been uh, at it for almost three hours, done two miles. A uh, little over 1,200 feet of elevation gain. Right now I'm at about 11.6 and change. So I'm hiking at the highest I've ever hiked before. Highest I've been back home is uh, San Gregorio, and that's 11.5 and change. Still have a couple more miles to go, probably, probably another thousand feet, but uh, not bad. It's uh, beautiful out here. All right, time to put the backpack on and head on up the hill.
blows my mind how these trees can hang on on these cliffs. Starting to get some views out to the south. <clears throat> my first marmot. I decided to carry that extra leader. Oh. oh well. This is the trail right along the cliff wall. Crazy. Made it up to the mine. Looks like I get a bit of a reprieve. A little downhill, a little flat. I think I go around that bend and that's where the switchback start okay almost done with the switchbacks this view is stupid just incredible hell yes made it damn these views to the north. Absolutely incredible. Log cabin or a little barn or something down there. So that was 2,210 feet and three and a half miles. Kicked my butt. I'm at, I'm at 12,700 feet and I'm taking a break. A little windy and a little cold up here. It looks like I'm hiking post to post because the trail kind of fizzles out. We got some lakes out here, a couple of campers. Okay, yeah, I screwed up. This is where the CDT and the CT meet. CDT goes this way. CT goes that way and the CDT, that's the continuation. And I came from this way, over that hill. That's the CT. So now I'm, I got it figured out now. Oh, whatever sign was up here is gone. I'm sure it was just a CDT marker. Oh yeah, I got a little snow patch right here. Heading down that way. Wonder if I'm gonna be uh, by those cabins. That'd be kind of cool. Would be a bad place to set up camp if it was. No, I'm not going to those cabins. I don't think <laughs> there is a cut through, but I don't think that would be it. Doing something I've never done before. Set up camp in the middle of the meadow, and this is the view. So the creek flows all the way over there. That's where I filled up. When I first walked in, uh, there was some mule deer uh, hanging out over here. Did see some bear scat over by the water. So we'll see if we get any visitors tonight. It is 548. I walked a little ways away from the tent, downwind, and this might be for dinner. I got my food rehydrating. The tent's back that way. Not a bad view for dinner. So I'm sitting here eating. And 
the moon decides to come out. Freaking awesome, man. All right, so you ever have one of those mornings? <laughs> Got up this morning, 17 degrees was the low. Wasn't anticipating below 20, but uh, I was fine. But the amount of frost on the tent, on the outside, on the inside, the ground, I'm, I'm in an open meadow. So I, hello, should have thought about that. But um, yeah, the, the frost was all over the ground. Uh, I'm looking... I'd tap the top of the tent and ice crystals would come showering down on me. So I thought, well, I better get my stuff out of here now before the sun fully comes up uh, and uh, ends up drenching me. So I pulled everything out, laid it out, and that was at about 5.30 this morning. Had breakfast, let things dry out, and it's 9.30. <laughs> Not as early of a start as I wanted, but uh, all things considered, got everything dried out. Yeah, we'll see how far we get today. It's a beautiful bluebird morning. Let's go. Heading up towards Hunchback Pass. Getting the other side of the mountain. And it opens up to this. A couple lakes down there. Welcome to Hunchback Pass. I've only done 1.7 miles, but I've gained 780 feet. So I'm taking my pack off, taking a break. It should be mostly downhill from this point for quite a while. That right there, that is Hunchback Mountain. All right, time to finish breakfast. And this is the basin I'm heading down into. Goodness. I just dropped 350 feet in a quarter of a mile. That was freaking steep. Well, here's the junction, and I have a decision to make. I can head this way uphill, stays on the seat. CDT and I could go exploring further on the CDT add probably another 20 ish miles to the trip or head down this way stick to the actual route I'm thinking since uh, I've only put in about 20 miles in two days I'm not gonna have the time to go the other route I'd rather be out early than out late oh look I got someone greeting me Right, coming to say hi. Chipmunks everywhere out here. That might have been what jumped in my bag night one. Finally a clearing. Give you an idea what I'm hiking by.
welcome to Rock Creek. I heard the cool thing about this creek is all of the rust color rocks that are in it. It's supposed to be pretty cool. It's definitely a color to it. And it's looking up Rock Creek. Very cool. color. Velocito. Trail runs along the side of it. Found that little spot that I can get down into it. Made the junction. Time to cross the bridge and find a campsite. That's up the Balasito, and that is down the Balasito. Now we need to find a campsite. Found camp for the night. I'm a little ways away from the creek, and I'm tucked into some trees. Not a bad view. Oh, and the moon. Very cool. Alright, let's get some water. Let's get there. It is gorgeous. close to eight. Everything's wet again. <laughs> it's already almost nine. It's about 845. I had I literally had everything packed up and ready to go, but everything was wet. And then the sun popped out. So I figured well might as well get this done. Yeah, I've got Columbine Pass today. It uh, probably going to be gaining close to 3,000 feet in about six and a half, seven miles. So it's going to be a long one. Low last night got down to 29, so it wasn't quite as cold. But uh, being not too far from the creek and being down in the valley, I even tried setting up under trees and everything. It just Everything's soaked, just dripping. Day four, off to a slow start. So I just took off a few minutes ago. Here's my trail. My pass, I believe, is around in here and up. First creek crossing of the day. I hope I can do this without getting my feet wet. Johnson Creek. And we're heading up the Vallecito Basin. Hit the two mile mark. Took the pack off, take a break. I've already gained over 800 feet. So I'm gonna eat, sit for about five, 10 minutes, and then continue on up. Well, I'm not liking the look of that. That's where I'm headed. And those clouds are getting a little dark. Marmot number two. Ooh, broke that into the clear. Yeah. Trails headed that way. 
Oh my God, it is straight down right here. Ooh, this is freaking awesome. Well, there's probably a reason this tree is dead. Cause, uh, holy cow, how is that holding on? That's not gonna be standing for too much longer. So I'm right at four miles and uh, climbed 1,879 feet. So not too bad. Still got, oh, almost 2,000 feet to go, not quite. And that's in three miles. That's gonna suck. All right, break time. Need to eat. What's up, dude? Not too sure? All right. So it looks like that's the pass that I'm heading for. And right below it, right over in here, is the lake. That's looking back. And I mean, it's just your average ordinary everyday walk through an alpine meadow. the outlet to Columbine Lake, which is going to be right over this little hump. There's my pass. And yeah, these clouds are looking ugly. I'm going to take a break at the lake and make a decision. I have a feeling I'm going over the pass. Welcome to Columbine Lake. It is pretty. It looks like places to camp on the far side, but, uh, and it looks protected. I think that'd be a bit deceiving because being by the water, the condensation is going to be a mess. Plus, we're at about 12, 4, 12, 2, 12, 4 right here. So, frost will be massive. And with these clouds, who knows? So I think I'm going to continue up the trail, get over the pass, try to get down into the basin. It's already four. It's gonna be some hiking to get up there and then to get back down. I got about two hours of daylight left. Should be able to do it. Here's my destination. I am officially at the top of Columbine Pass. This is the ridge. And check this out. This is where I will be dropping in. Chicago Basin. So, that's seven and a third miles so far. Uh, I'm at 12,700 and change, I think it's 15, up on uh, Columbine Pass. And uh, 3,600 feet of elevation gain in those seven and a third miles. So, anyway, I'm going that way now. I've got to get down this uh, pass before the sun goes down so I can find a campsite. Damn. 
This is going down just as fast as the other side came up. That's my trail. Just got some water from the creek over there. And I got camp set up right there. All right, time to get dinner going. It's just about boiling. Oh boy. Sitting here waiting on dinner and oh my goodness. These mountains are just lit up red. I'm in the shade now. It cooled off about five degrees, 10 degrees real quick. But man, that is awesome. There's the third one. All right, I gotta do a play dinner. Oh my gosh. There are probably 35, 40 feet away. If that. Day five, no shower. Nasty. Lovely. Have a decision to make on whether or not I'm gonna stretch it out for two more nights or just one. Woke up this morning, 31 degrees, not bad. My, uh, Solitude has been destroyed. I woke up this morning, a group of seven people walked right by me. And I can hear some more coming up the trail right now. So I, going from seeing zero people over the last uh, two full days to big group. It's kind of funny. Anyway, day five, getting started. Looks like we've got an old mine. Some track. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, yeah. That goes way back there. There's a cabin over there. Probably another mine. There's a good shot of Columbine Pass. Right there. That's where I came through yesterday. I was way up there. You can see the trail coming down. All right, two mile break. These two miles have taken me two hours. Not because it's hard hiking. This has been the easiest hiking of the trip so far. It is so beautiful in here. I'm stopping every 10 to 15 minutes. A lot more people. Uh, I've always heard Chicago Basin's popular. There's a lot more people in here. So I'm gonna finish my breakfast. It's about 11.30. Uh, I was hoping to get 10 miles in. I don't know if I'm going to because uh, I keep getting distracted. All right, time to finish breakfast. Yeah, this is why it's taking me so long. 
keep getting distracted and fighting things off the trail, check it out. That'd be a cool swimming hole. Looks like an awesome campsite down in there. Because you're surrounded by all this. No idea what these are. Well, I'm never going to get out of here at this rate. Oh, this is gorgeous. All right, one more break. I'm at mile five. Uh, 2,500 feet I've come down already in five miles. So I'm gonna sit, rest my feet for a few, my knee, and uh, have a snack. And uh, head on out. That's kind of cool. So apparently, this is the confluence of New York Creek, that way, and Needle Creek, which is the one I've been hiking by all this time. So there you go. Starting to get some aspen leaves on the ground. Purgatory Trail. Let's go find a campsite. And we've got another bridge. There's a creek. That's what I've been hiking down all this time. Well, this is just a good old fashioned walk in the woods and the duff on the ground, very soft underfoot. Been hiking along the river for a little bit. It's really nice. Camp for what is looking like the last night on the trail. It's gonna be five nights instead of six. Just didn't make sense to hike smaller miles just to extend it out. I got a six mile day tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm just gonna take my time. Day five, I'm making a hot chocolate. So I ended up doing just over 10 miles today, about 3,800 feet going down, coming out of uh, Chicago Basin. Chicago Basin was just gorgeous. Uh, the six miles through the basin took me about six hours and it was downhill. I was stopping every five minutes. Uh, just beautiful. Um, I'm camped along the Amethyst River. I've already seen two trains go by. Probably be one that wakes me up in the morning. And uh, 
yeah, tonight's my last night. So uh, I've got six miles back to the Bronco tomorrow. Probably get there, hoping early afternoon. And head up to Silverton. Maybe have a burger or something. And go from there. So I, I've, I've learned I enjoy doing this so much, but more than a few days solo, it's tough. It's real tough. Um, all this beauty and, and everything, it, it's meant to be shared, and I miss sharing it. So, oh, water's warming. All right, that's it for night five. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, day six. I've got about six miles out to the Bronco. It's about 8.30 in the morning right now. All packed up, ready to go. Low this morning uh, was 31. And it's just now starting to get windy. It was real calm overnight. It was very nice. I was worried about uh, humidity condensation because of the river. Didn't have any issues, so. Time to get out of here. Go get a burger in uh, Silverton, maybe. We'll see. Not a bad walk for the last day. Across the tracks, just to my left. Gotta get the obligatory railroad track shot. It's a must. So it looks like this is where I'm crossing the river. Oh, cascade wide that way. Why not? I got time. I think I found a popular place. Look at all the tables. There's nobody here. This is like the Cascade that starts right here. I think it's just a series of rapids. Maybe in a couple months. Yeah, so this is why Lori gave me the trail name Squirrel. I'm very easily distracted. And I like to go look at things. All right, back on track. Oh, wow. This board supposed to be creaking this much? It's upstream. It's downstream. All right, enough gawking. Let's go. I can even hear the first train coming through. Just blew a whistle. Can't see it. Might hear it chugging. You can definitely hear him now. It's on the other side of those trees. Can't see him. Climbing, climbing, getting out of the canyon. Okay, yeah, this is a pretty spectacular view. Fortunately, the dead trees are This, I believe, is Purgatory Flats. It's wide open up here. Nice meadow. Wow. Climbing up out of the flat. It's 
but it was down there. This gave a good chance for a break so I can catch my breath. Well, we must be getting close to the trailhead because uh, morons like this don't hike in very far. Don't carp trees, people. Nice house. All right. I am leaving the Wamanuchi Wilderness. Almost there. Hi, puppy. Silverton, there's one of the trains.